for the Australian TV station, go to SES, RTS. SES 8 is a geostationary communication satellite operated by SES. SES 8 was successfully launched on SpaceX Falcon 9 v 1.1 on 3 December 2013, 2241 Coordinated Universal Time It was the first flight of any SpaceX launch vehicle to a supersynchronous transfer orbit. An orbit with a somewhat larger apogee than the more usual geostationary transfer orbit GTO typically utilized for communication satellites. Satellite The SES-8 satellite is built on the STAR 2.4 satellite bus by Orbital Sciences. It is the sixth satellite of that model to be built for SES. The COMSAT will be initially co located at 95 degrees east with NSS 6 in order to provide communications bandwidth growth capacity in the Asia Pacific region, specifically aimed at high growth markets in South Asia and Indochina, as well as provide expansion capacity for DTH, VSAT, and government applications. Topic Specifications Payload mass three thousand two hundred kilograms, seven thousand one hundred pounds. Electrical power five kilowatts using gallium arsenide solar panels and two four thousand eight hundred and fifty watt hours, seventeen thousand five hundred kilojoules lithium ion storage batteries. Battery backup, 4,800 watt-hour lithium-ion battery Service life, 15 years <laughs> <laughs> Launch vehicle The launch of SES-8 was the seventh launch of the Falcon 9 launch vehicle, and the second launch of the Falcon 9 V1.1. SES is paying a discounted price, well under $60 million, for the launch since it is the inaugural geostationary launch on the Falcon 9. When originally contracted, in 2011 the putative launch date was early 2013. The launch was the second launch of the Falcon 9 V1.1 version of the rocket, a longer rocket with 60% more thrust than version 1.0 Falcon 9 vehicle, and will be the first launch of the larger V1.1 rocket using the rebuilt Erector structure at SpaceX Cape Canaveral launch pad. As a result, a number of systems on the launch vehicle will be flown for only the second time, while several parts of the ground infrastructure at Cape Canaveral were used in a launch for the first time. These include Second use of the upgraded Merlin 1D engines, generating approximately 56% more sea level thrust than the Merlin 1C engines used on the first five Falcon 9 flights. Second use of the significantly longer rocket stages, which were lengthened to accommodate the larger propellant tanks needed to carry propellant for the more powerful engines. The tanks are 60% longer, making the rocket more susceptible to bending during flight. The nine Merlin 1D engines on the first stage are arranged in an octagonal pattern with eight engines in a circle and the ninth in the center. Second launch to have a jettisonable payload fairing, which has the risk of an additional separation event that has doomed many missions in the past. Fairing design was done by SpaceX, with production of the 13 m long, 5.2 m diameter fairing done in Hawthorne, California at the SpaceX rocket factory. Testing of the new fairing design, first required on the Cassiope flight the sixth flight of the Falcon 9, was done at NASA's Plum Brook Station where acoustic shock and mechanical vibration of launch, plus electromagnet C static discharge conditions, were tested on a full-size fairing test article in a very large vacuum chamber. 
SpaceX paid NASA $581,296 to lease test time in the $150 million NASA Simulation Chamber facility. Second flight of the vehicle with upgraded avionics and flight software, in order to maximize the propellant available for the launch of CES 8 into GTO. SpaceX did not attempt a controlled descent test of the first stage booster as they did on the previous Falcon 9 V1.1 flight in September 2013. <laughs> Second stage reignition In the previous launch of the Falcon 9 V1.1 — the first launch of the much larger version of the rocket with new Merlin 1D engines — on 29 September 2013, SpaceX was unsuccessful in reigniting the second-stage Merlin 1D vacuum engine once the rocket had deployed its primary payload Cassiope and all of its Nanosat secondary payloads. The restart failure was determined to be frozen igniter fluid lines in the second stage Merlin 1D engine. A minor redesign was done to address the problem by adding additional insulation to the lines, a second burn of the upper stage was required, and was completed successfully. During the CES 8 mission, in order to place the CES 8 telecommunications satellite into the highly elliptical supersynchronous orbit for satellite operator CES to effect a plane change and orbit circularization, the Falcon 9 upper stage used to launch CES 8 was left in a decaying elliptical lower. Earth orbit which, by September 2014, had decayed and re-entered the atmosphere. <laughs> Pre-launch Both stages of the Falcon 9 arrived at Cape Canaveral for processing before October 2, 2013, after both had trouble-free test firings at the SpaceX Rocket Development and Test Facility at McGregor, Texas, a launch attempt on 25 November 2013, with a planned liftoff at 22.37 Coordinated Universal Time was scrubbed following a reported off-nominal condition in the liquid oxygen tank and supply lines of the first stage booster that could not be resolved within the approximately one hour launch window. A launch date of 28 November 2013 was announced, three days later, being the next opportunity for the launch site on Earth to be in alignment to achieve the target orbit. <laughs> <laughs> launch attempts. Topic. See also List of Falcon 9 launches